Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Edit Place. And it has indeed been a hot minute since I've uploaded on this channel. If you're checking this out and I have no idea who I am, hello, I'm Michael Tobin. This is kind of my secondary channel. You can check out my main channel in the description below for if you're into technology, filmmaking, and stuff like that. This channel is kind of created to be a dedicated space for all editing type topics. And yeah, so today I wanted to get in to something I've wanted to do for a long time, which is try out Avid. I pride myself on being pretty software agnostic. If you ask me on any given day to jump in and create a project or work on a project in Final Cut, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to be pretty comfortable. I'd say that I know all of those software to a expert level. Now, DaVinci Resolve is my main platform of choice just because I shoot on Blackmagic cameras and I'm really into learning to be a colorist and that is by far the best colorist uh, software out there. But Avid Media has been something that I've always wanted to jump into because it is the industry standard in Hollywood. Most films are edited and compiled together using Avid. I remember seeing Avid back in the day when I first was starting out and I used to see timelines like this on people's systems and that super scared me away from it and obviously the price tag at the time was pretty crazy. Uh, but now, that I am older and wiser and have been in the game for a while, I know that most video editing software pretty much all works the same. And if you are one of the type of people that are contemplating uh, changing software maybe, but you're nervous, like you're tired of Premiere Pro crashing on you or something, or you just wanna jump away from Final Cut, try something else, whatever the combination is, um, I hope that this video is proof that you can easily switch softwares because it's uh, all pretty easy. I mean, the basics are going to be pretty easy. I haven't even downloaded the software. I wanted to do it all kind of live for this video to get my first initial reactions. Um, but my guess as of right now is I'm going to pick up the basics pretty quick and hopefully learn a couple cool standout features along the way. And I'm sure get a little frustrated by not being able to find stuff because that is always frustrating for the first couple of hours of learning any new software. Now, what caused me wanting to make this video is yesterday on Twitter, I saw Avid tweet out about their new update and their users were getting pretty stoked about whatever new features. And so I wanted to come in here and try it out. And it turns out, I don't know if this is new. If you're an Avid user, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, but apparently they have a Media Composer first which is free. So I think they're trying to compete with DaVinci Resolve's free version of Studio, or not Studio is the paid one, but you get what I'm saying. But since there's a free version, we're not even gonna bother with the trial. We are going to, and I have to create an account. Okay. All right, and apparently they've emailed me my download links, which, yep, they did. We can see that here. We can download Mac or Windows version. So now we just wait for it to uh, download. One eternity later. Install. Yes, I agree. Sign my life away. <sighs> Click restart to begin using the software. No. Avid, why do I need to restart my computer to use the software? That just... Mm. And I forgot that it had boot camp turned on to automatically go to Windows on a reboot. Wow, this screen is dirty. Cleaning up. Oh, don't tell me it's installing Windows updates. For you, I've may included like, what, 20 seconds of this boredom stuff. Uh, for me, it's been 18 and a half minutes. All right, fine. I'll spare you guys. Through the power of editing, I will now use the YouTube cliche transition to jump to when this all is actually working. Whoop! And we're back. Would you look at that? We're magically on the Mac side again. And I've clicked on Avid to boot it up. Let's see. We got our first little dialog window here. Please select one of the options below. I want to activate using my software. Use the Avid link. Uh, Media Composer first, because that's the free one. So just like any other pay to play software, you can choose how you want to activate. We're being cheap here today and going with the first. Logger and required for me to please quit and log into Avid Media Link. What? Install apps silently? 
what opposed to loudly okay so i guess this is a little dialogue box there's like a marketplace where you can like buy plugins and stuff lounges find talent i get okay i mean cool whatever uh for products we're gonna go with media first so again we're gonna open avid and see if after 24 minutes we can actually start editing would you look at that? It looks like we're actually loading some sort of editing software screen. A few moments later. All right, we are welcomed with a beginning screen here. Holy moly. All right, create project. So what are we going to call this one? We are going to call this one um, iPhone 12 Pro Max versus Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. I'm going to use footage from this latest YouTube project I did over on my main channel. Again, if you haven't seen it, go check it out in the card above or link in the description. Choose our project location. Yes, you can use my various folders. Uh, we'll just put it in here, I guess. And cr open, create. What? Yes. What? Just... Okay, the option to create was there. Leave the application. No, I don't want to leave the application. Let's try it again. All right, just going to hit create. Boom. And we are greeted with a very basic layout. Looks like we have our source um, viewer here. I'm guessing timeline viewer, a very obvious timeline down here. I can't tell if these blue lines are a glitch with the random toolbar or if this is a feature and looks like we have our media bins over here. I can open bin, add new bins. I believe on the free version, I'm limited to like five bins. Where are, oh, and these are also the effects and presets. Looks like you get a good amount. Oh, so this is everything. Yeah, color correction presets. Uh, title presets do you get like a preview no all right so i guess i shouldn't have complained all that time for resolve not having previews on their stuff audio tracks audio clips cool so that's where that stuff is Bins effects palette, sure. 2K, 4K. Okay, are these different timelines? What is this? Sequences. Okay. So that's new bin. Timeline. All right, so, so right now I'm just trying to find how to import footage. Oh, a helpful thing is we can't see on the right-hand side more software has started to do this. So we have the edit page, we have a color page, we have an effects page, and audio page. Cool. Obviously we're still on the edit page here because we're in the edit place. Oh, so those are bins, okay. Input source browser. Oh, so the Source browser is a totally separate thing. Okay, but I can attach. I can, okay, it's got the snap. I like that. So if you have multiple monitors, you get that going. That's cool. So I'm going to go in here, find my stuff. Let's see how it plays with some B raw. Import. I don't know where I'm importing this to. Add to bin. Can I be linked? Do you want to import it? Y yes. B raw is not supported. Should I have looked this up before the video? Absolutely. Did I? No.
All right, so apparently I have to download a plugin, Blackmagic Raw. I'm gonna go ahead and quit Avid. Duper duper do. Thought I had Blackmagic Raw already installed because it works in Premiere, but why not? We'll just reinstall it. Worst case. I swear to gushness, if I have to restart again, I'm gonna cry. Patiently waiting. Going to open our existing project. Let's see if there's some sort of preference. Haha! -ha! We did it! In 49 minutes of record time, we have added footage into a bin. I got. Can I even watch it? Am I going to be able to place back? <laughs> Guys, I think we can uh, quit. If you're curious how the playback uh, is, obviously we're just doing one clip. We don't have like a whole color graded project going, but it's good. I mean, I'm playing back 6K B raw footage. It's just fine. Let's add our very first clip to a avid timeline. Is this before continuing? Raster size of the image, edit. All right, sure. All right, holy monkey, we got some colors. Things looking weird. Can I resize those up? Oh, click the button. Clicked a button. Oh, what? No. You can easily switch softwares. I think the hardest part about trying new software is fighting that immediate urge to be like, this is a garbage design. This is terrible piece of software. Cause that's like all that's going through my head right now. And that's all I've wanted to say to cameras like, wow, this is a terrible design. When in reality, you just get used to what you get used to. And this is unfamiliar territory. I'm sure if I fully dedicated myself and was like, I'm going to edit an Avid right now for the next month, then within like probably five hours, I'd have like all of the basics down. Um, and then obviously over weeks of using it every day, um, you'd be borderline pro at everything just figuring it out and I keep scrubbing uh, just because I don't know and let me see what audio looks like so none of these clips have audio to them I recorded them silently but this should there we go oh we got black waveforms now one thing I want to test really quickly is some basic shortcuts which are pretty much the same like in in Final Cut and Premiere, and I believe Resolve, Resolve, I have custom keyboard settings, so I honestly can't remember the defaults too much. Uh, but for example, like Command B. B? Oh, B did something. What in the... I have no idea what B does, but that is not cut. So like a keyboard shortcut. Oh God, you're gonna take me to a website? Okay, what is B, what is B? Overwrites clip into sequence. Oh. So if I have like in and out points. Do something like that, and then I want to insert that right there. Is that, is that what's happening? Yeah, I, I believe so. All right, so apparently I'm in a mode where I can't actually grab the clips. It just moves the playhead. So I need to change that. All right, so that's more like it. So if I were to move this, 
and then I do add edit. Yeah, that's the cut. That's what you call it. Add edit. Okay. Is there a shortcut for add edit? Okay. Let's see. What about, let me add a basic title. Okay. Let's say I want to add a title. This looks add titler. Oh, that's what that thing was called. That it was like, do you want to download titler? Pretty sure I said no to it. So maybe I'll, so maybe I'll have limited title options here. What is happening? Okay. So I got a new window. Certainly doesn't look anything like, looks like it's trying to look like Premiere's old title thing. Okay, this is like the closest thing to a normal text box I've seen. Do I just do it on here? Bring to front, send to back. Sure. Select te what text? See, I'm trying to do this without looking up any explanations. I know I had to for the whole B-Raw thing, but like I'm trying to give myself like 10 minutes of figuring it out before I had title. Or maybe that wasn't the right button. See, I see a title thing now. What? Did I like copy that? And add, add filter. Maybe I have to do like a new, not new sequence, but like, clip, no. We got motion effects with feel like I'm missing something completely. Like where's the inspector? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm calling this now. I, I realized this video, like I didn't even edit something together. Like I couldn't even figure out within 10 minute time frame how to add a basic title. Is Avid like a terrible piece of editing software? No, of course not. Like I said, pretty much every Hollywood feature film is made on here. So if you know the software or if your goal is to become a Hollywood type editor, then yes, you should take the clearly what is going to be a long time uh, to learn this piece of software. But if you are a content creator and you are just starting out or you're learning, or again, you're thinking about switching programs, it is good to have a program that you can easily ask other people how to do stuff, quickly look up things and get proper answers and all Final Cut and Premiere are definitely in the top two, and Resolve is definitely starting to be picked up by more uh, content creators and smaller commercial uh, short film, whatever filmmaker type level you want to call it, uh, being more picked up. So you can easily hop on Twitter or any of the forums and ask people like, hey, how do I do this type of transition? How do I create, you know, load in my specific LUT or whatever it is. But in Avid, you're either going to probably be laughed at in their forums for being a YouTuber who's trying to use Avid, um, not to speak illy of the Avid community. I'm sure you guys are awesome. But anyway, the general like layout language of how this software is very different from every other video editing software I have ever used. I completely understand why no YouTuber has really touched Avid. Yes, it follows the same basic guidelines where this is your timeline, this is your source and timeline viewers, and this is where you have your media bins. And then if you have multiple monitors, you can have floating windows that you can customize to your liking. That's where the basics end. I mean, in every other software, it's called split or trim or something. Add edit. That's your split. I don't know. Anyway, Avid is not for me. Am I going to continue to learn it because I'm obsessed with learning new software? Yes. Am I going to start creating and editing these videos on it? No. However, if you guys want to see more editing 
videos in Avid and promise me it's not purely because you want to see me suffer, uh, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best if you guys are super, super interested in this. Otherwise, let's go back to our own domain of Resolve Premiere and Final Cut and what has been an hour and a half for basically no progress. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video at least a little bit and got some wisdom of whether or not you want to try Avid or not. Uh, clearly you learned nothing about actually editing in this video and for that I apologize. But hopefully you saw something worth subscribing here and maybe even hit that like button to make me feel like I didn't completely waste the past hour and a half and what is going to be many hours of editing this down so that it's not that long for you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. See you in the next video. I am hungry.